Hello, uh, welcome uh, to our webinar, Industrial Communication at LAP. This is a new format we are going to offer our colleagues uh, every Tuesday uh, globally. Uh, in the morning, we always hold the topic at 11 a.m. in German language and then followed afterwards at 12.30 p.m. In English language. So this is our international language, uh, English language webinar now, uh, Industrial Communication at LAP. Uh, my name is Christian Müller. I'm from the product marketing department and I'm happy to welcome with me Ralf Möbus as the speaker of today's topic. Uh, Ralf Möbus uh, is the head of our product management industrial communication. Up front, before I hand over to Ralf Möbus, some organizational information for you. Uh, we uh, try to limit the speaking time to approximately 40 minutes, and afterwards we will have enough time for a short question and answer session. Uh, question and answer session, here's some uh, um, data protection information. Uh, this webinar is recorded. Um, afterwards, when we have the Q&A session, your names will not be displayed or will not be mentioned during that session. And also when we share the recording afterwards, the Q&A session will be cut out from the recording. Uh, please also um, note that you see on your dashboard on the right side um, a panel where you can uh, ask questions during the session. We, coll we collect those questions and we'll get back to those questions at the end during the Q&A session. And so please feel free during the whole session to type in your questions there. Uh, in general, Technology, technology Tuesdays, um, the first webinar topic today, we start every Tuesday with interesting topics around products and portfolio. Um, feel free to click on our website, labcable, labcable.com, or also on our uh, country website. You will find in the news section the latest uh, scheduled webinars, uh, and you find also the links there to register to other topics. Um, yeah. In this case, thank you very much uh, for joining, and I will hand over to Ralf Möbus. So, thank you very much for the introduction, Christian Müller, and a uh, warm welcome from my side, and uh, thank you for your interest in our industrial communication webinar today. Um, the idea of this webinar is uh, to give you an impression about the industrial communication solutions um, that we are offering at LAP. And uh, so this is more or less an overview of our complete project ranges for industrial communication. And uh, if you are interested in diving deeper in uh, specific topics, um, I can recommend uh, further webinars that we are offering for industrial communication that I tell you also later. So industrial communication is a topic that is um, heavily discussed in the last years because um, everyone is talking about digitalization and smart factories at the moment. And uh, industrial communication is one of the key technologies that is um, needed for, um, let's say, making factories smart. And uh, because uh, if you produce a lot of data in your machines, uh, you maybe want to collect and uh, communicate the data and have it available uh, in another place at the cloud or in your ERP system. Also, machines itself uh, are communicating more and more. So industrial communication is an uh, uh, important key technology for the future. And uh, since at the moment, uh, I think a lot of people are sitting at home in their home office and um, have the opportunity to do some webinars and uh, why not uh, listening to a webinar about uh, some uh, future technologies that can help you uh, for your future projects um, to make machinery or factories more smart. So, um,
Christian, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see. Okay, because I cannot see it anymore. <laughs> Just give me a second, because I cannot see the screen anymore. I cannot see the PowerPoint slides anymore. Otherwise, I can uh, take over and show the slides on my screen. Yeah, let's try it like this because I cannot see the, the slides anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I see it. Okay, next slide. Okay, thank you. So, industrial communication um, in the, let's say, last years, uh, we had a lot of developments there um, about certain standards. And um, so, looking at the left side of this um, chart that you can see there, um, we have the field buses um, that have been developed uh, during the uh, 80s in the last century. And uh, one important uh, standard there in Europe is Profibus. Um, I think a lot of you maybe know this. And, uh, but we have also a lot of other standards that have been developed um, in other regions of the world. So Profibus is the leading standard um, for field buses in Europe, but in Asia, for example, we have uh, CC Link, or in uh, US, we have these um, device net as a uh, major standard. <clears throat> so for field buses, we have a market share um, in at a market share in 2018 of about 42 percent. And you see on the right side, the green side. Um, we have the industrial Ethernet, which has now a market share of about 52%. And uh, this is something that is uh, strong growing. And um, so with an average um, growth rate of 22% uh, um, at the moment. And if you look at the field bus, we have an average growth rate um, of about 6%. So that means uh, the dynamic about uh, or behind industrial Ethernet uh, is very strong. So um, what you also can see there is um, that we have um, some other standards like uh, wireless communication, which has a market share of about 6% at the moment, uh, but with a uh, very strong growth rate that is um, expected of 32%. That means uh, wireless is let's say not that important today but in the future it will be also find more and more in the factories so um looking at the industrial ethernet um we have there the leading standard in uh, europe uh, this is profinet there's a market share of about 12 percent and uh, in the us and also in some asian regions we have uh, Ethernet IP as the leading standard, which was originally developed from Rockwell Automation, and uh, which is a control system manufacturer. And therefore, this is the reason why you can find this very often in the on the US market. We have also some other standards like EtherCut or, for example, PowerLink. Um, so you see that. For sure, the market share of EtherCAD is uh, not comparable to Profinet or Ethernet IP, but uh, um, since this is a system that came from, uh, comes from Beckhoff, and uh, so, but 
anyhow, they have found a lot of um, other manufacturers that are also providing uh, products for Ethernet. So <clears throat> that means uh, industrial Ethernet um, is growing in the importance and uh, there are a lot of reasons why people want to uh, use more and more industrial Ethernet. Um, for sure, one thing is um, that uh, the field buses have been more, more or less proprietary. That means um, if you want to use them and uh, communicate to the internet or the cloud or to computers, for example, you always needed some kind of uh, gateways or something like this. And uh, with the use of industrial Ethernet, it now makes it also possible to use standard uh, Ethernet technology to uh, communicate um, via the internet or the company network. And so this makes it now more and more po possible to build real uh, smart factories. And um, what is also interesting to mention is that uh, the world is getting more and more open uh, for communication systems. Um, we have now new standards that are coming up like OPC UA. Uh, OPC UA is an, a standard uh, that is really open and uh, promoted by the OPC Foundation. And a lot of companies are already member of that and uh, also providing products for OPC UA. And uh, OPC UA has a big chance um, to, let's say, um, come back to what maybe one standard uh, that is suitable for all the communication needs in the factories. So next slide. So our portfolio. Um, so um, you, everyone knows uh, Lab uh, and the brand Ölflex. Um, so this was the idea or the development of the founder of the lab group, Oscar Lab. And uh, the idea of Oilflex was to build a cable that is suitable for uh, factories and which is very oil resistant and uh, works quite well in, a, in industrial machinery. So during the time, uh, Lab developed a lot of more products uh, that are needed uh, for cabling and connectivity in factories. So um, Epic, this is our, our connector brand. Skintop is our cable gland brand. Um, Sylvine is for protecting cables and uh, FlexiMark is for marking cables. So today we want to focus on industrial communication and uh, products for industrial communication. You can find under our three brands, Unitronic. This is for field buses, the field bus systems, Easerline, um, is for industrial Ethernet and Hydronic is the brand for fiber optic communication systems. So next slide. So this is our focus today, uh, these three brands. So the basic idea or the core idea when, he, when we built up um, our industrial communication program is that we always want to provide a complete solution to our customer. That means everything that um, a customer needs to build up an industrial communication network. So first of all, for sure, it's uh, trivial. You need some cables uh, when it comes to communication, uh, some data cables. And uh, to connect the cables uh, to a device, uh, you always need some connectors for this. So, and uh, if you don't want to connect the uh, con connectors on your own, you can buy some patch cords from us. So, and last but not least, um, we need some Ethernet switches. So, you know, there's a little bit um, difference uh, from the build up of field buses, field bus networks to the industrial Ethernet networks. With industrial Ethernet, now uh, we need some switches to build the network. Because um, in opposite to the uh, field buses where we had been able to interconnect uh, the end devices like controllers, sensors, and actuator uh, directly with, with, with cables and connectors, now with Ethernet, 
uh, we need always switches to interconnect uh, these devices. So that means switches are an uh, integral part of the network and an important part of the network. And sure, this is the reason why we see this also um, as an important part of our portfolio. And uh, in general, we say um, LAP is uh, system neutral. Um, I explain you what this means. Uh, please, next slide, Christian. So system neutral means uh, we offer products um, for all major protocols on the market. So that means uh, not just for Profinet, which is for sure the most important standard in Europe. Uh, we offer also products for Ethernet IP or CC Link IE or Ethercup. Um, so the big advantage is uh, for, for a user or machine builder uh, that if they want to change their control system, for example, um, today you liver, deliver a machine to a um, German uh, customer, which is who uses Profinet and control system from Siemens. And now you have to deliver the machine uh, to, um, to the US and uh, your customer is um, demanding um, control system maybe from Rockwell, which is communicating over Ethernet IP. In this case, now you have to change always also your uh, control system and um, your communication system manufacturer. And uh, this lab, since we are system neutral, um, we are supporting all these systems. You can always stay with lab, uh, who's your provider for the industrial communication system. This is a, a big advantage. And by the way, LAB is also a member of all these um, important user organizations that ensures that our products are always uh, compatible and uh, to that standard and are, are developed uh, to the latest specifications of this system. So that means we are also working actively in these uh, user organizations for Profinet or for Ethernet IP and uh, CC Link, I, these are the three major um, organizations where we are member in. So, um, so looking at this um, tool set um, that we are offering here, um, I said uh, we always uh, provide the complete cabling and connectivity solutions for a specific standard. And um, so the basic building blocks are always the same. So you need a cable, you need a connector, and you need a switch. And maybe uh, if you don't want to connect the connector on your own, you need a patch cord. So means um, we have this complete tool set for all the major standards in our program. So this is, let's say, our core um, portfolio idea. Yeah. And um, I said Profinet is important. This is um, also the case or the reason why we offer Profinet webinar. Um, also in this webinar series, we have on, six, uh, on 9th of uh, June, um, we have a Profinet webinar that you can join if you are interested in where we go deeper in the details about uh, Profinet, which cables are used, which connectors are used or which uh, switches are used. Okay, next slide, please. So with our system, it is possible um, to build a complete industrial communication network starting from the sensor up to the PLC and further to the ERP system. So for sure, all these products are, are somehow different uh, from the environment, but also from the requirements. Um, so you can imagine if you're uh, building a data network, um, a Ethernet network at this robot on the right side, you maybe need some special cable that are torsion resistant, or if you want to connect from the um, factory to the, to the, um, 
to the office, then you maybe um, need some special some some LAN cables that are suitable to be installed on, on a cable tray and maybe fulfill a high uh, data rate requirements like category seven or something like this. So um, so this is the, the core idea um, to build um, the complete um, network from sensors to the office, to the ERP systems and uh, to access, to make all the data uh, in the factory accessible. Next slide, please. Um, maybe I've forgotten one thing to mention. The picture that you have seen there was a part of our application guide that we have developed. Um, so on the, and that in that orange box on the right corner, um, you can see the link uh, to our application guide. And uh, this is a great tool and help um, uh, to find some specific solutions for uh, your specific application. So you can directly click on that robot there and then you find uh, our products that can be used uh, to build, for example, a Profinet network on this robot. So now next slide, please. Um, special requirements, no problem. Um, in this case, uh, we are talking about cables. Um, this was a challenge I tried to solve uh, to put all our Ethernet cables uh, on one slide, which is really a huge portfolio, but um, this is somehow the, the let's say a, a try to uh, make it easy accessible so cat 5 cat 6 cat 7 uh, i think this is something that everyone knows from ethernet cables yeah cat 5 for 100 megabit and cat 6 and cat 7 if you need a gigabit uh, communication so but what makes it now even more complex is that we have um, cables for different environments and uh, industries. So you can imagine if you want to have a uh, CAT5 cable that can be put on this robot on the right side, um, then it maybe has to be very torsion resistant um, for a long time and uh, work on this robot. So, um, or if you have a cable, um, a data cable, an ethernet cable that can be built in a uh, public transportation uh, segment on such a bus. Yeah. Um, if you want to use today cables in a bus, then you have to fulfill a certain European uh, directive, uh, which is the ECER 118, um, which does, for example, not allow that uh, you have any halogens in the cable because um, if a fire breaks out, you get a lot of smoke there in the bus, which um, is toxic for the people and uh, where people can die. So also some very special um, requirements that are totally different to the requirements uh, at this robot there. Our food and beverage, um, we have developed a special material that can be used um, in food and beverage, which is our robust material. So you get also Ethernet cables from CAT5 to CAT7 from us with that special robust material um, that can be used very good in uh, food and beverage and which are very working very reliable there because in food and beverage, you know, you have um, maybe some acids uh, or maybe you have some cleaning detergents um, that can be very, um, the, let's say critical for the cable that um, the cable is damaged uh, by, the, by this. Yeah, so that means so we have all the data rates from CAT5 to CAT7 that are relevant for the industry, and uh, then we have different um, materials and uh, approvals that the cables can be used in certain industries and uh, certain applications. So next slide, please. So plug and play. Um, 
if you don't want to connect the connector on your own to the cable, um, we can offer also patch cords. Uh, what is the advantage of uh, using a patch cord? Yes, first of all, you don't need to assemble the connector on your own, for sure. Um, but on the other hand, you also receive uh, a tested um, installation. That means uh, the cable is really, uh, it is an overmolded connector, which is um, very tight um, uh, or it's very proof against uh, water that water or dirt can come in um, or also it is at the end tested uh, after the installation um, with a network analyzer that um, we ensure that the cable fulfills uh, also the data rate uh, requirements and uh, this is something that is uh, very often some additional work that you have to do when you install the connector on your own you at the end, you have to test it with a fluke or a test device that is not needed there yeah, because you get it ready to use. So another advantage is um, if you use patch cables from a cable manufacturer is that you have a, good, a nice portfolio of cables that can be used for the patch cords. So, um, with LAP, we ensure um, that if you, for example, use our meterware cables um, and you are satisfied with these cables in your application, that they work there quite, quite well. For example, this food and beverage application that I mentioned. And then you can easily switch over to the patch cord. So, because we are offering also these meterware cables uh, in our patch cord assemblies. So this is an advantage that you always can use the same uh, cable material that you know from the meterware. So um, we at Profinet, we are supporting all the uh, Profinet installation types that are known, uh, type A, B, C. Um, you know, A is for fixed installation, B for flexible and C for highly flexible in crack chains or in torsion applications like robots. And uh, from CAT5 to CAT6A, that means from 100 megabit uh, to 10 gigabit per second. And uh, also the, um, let's say the, all the well-known connectors for this, uh, RG45 for inside the cabinet and M12D and X-coded for 100 megabit or for 10 gigabit outside the cabinet. So what is the big difference? Um, that's something that uh, customers often ask uh, between an industrial uh, cabinet uh, to an office cabinet uh, patch cord uh, like that what I use for my uh, computer. Uh, in industrial cabinets, we uh, sorry, patch cords, uh, we have a much higher shielding, uh, up to 80%, which is important um, for using the patch cords in industrial applications where you often have servo drives or motors uh, that make a lot of uh, EMC interference and uh, to, let's say, uh, to, to avoid that uh, data transmission is, Interfere, interfered. Um, we need very good shielding for the cables. So, but nevertheless, um, it is possible also to use um, patch cords with a lower shielding. We have also such a program, um, which are for sure lower in the cost um, for simple applications um, in cabinets that can be used with RG45 connectors and uh, with lower shielding and uh, with not so industrial grade materials, and which can also be a solution for uh, not so high requirements. So next slide, please. So switches. I already mentioned um, that switches are important for industrial Ethernet networks, and uh, this is also one of the reasons why we are offering switches because we want to provide the complete solutions. 
for industrial networks. And uh, in the last years, um, we have built up this portfolio. And uh, I think now we have all the, or I'm sure that now we have all the parts that are needed um, for machine builders. So um, in this presentation now, I just want to show you some uh, highlight products, some new products um, that we have um, released recently. And um, that you can also for sure find on our website now. Um, unmanaged and managed switches, that's what you can see here. Um, so managed switches, the main difference uh, between a managed and an unmanaged switch is that managed switches are more intelligent. That means uh, it's managed. Uh, you can have a lot of diagnostic functions. Uh, you have redundancy functions. Uh, and also you can maintenance and monitor the network from remote. What is not, all that's not possible with unmanaged switch. So, but that if you think about important, um, advantages of unmanaged switches for sure they're plug and play uh, because there can nothing be configured um, or set up so it's just plug it in and then it's working so these are the main differences and um, so for the managed switches we have added some new devices there uh, to manage switches with um, fiber optic ports so um, also again, the solution aspect, yeah, um, we offer fiber optic cables and connectors and uh, all that, all that uh, products. And um, so to build the complete network, we also need a fiber optic switch. Um, with this switch, um, it can be used for integrating a machine in a company backbone or in a factory backbone because with the two fiber optic ports you can go with your fiber optic cables in uh, on the one side and go out on the other side on the second port so we are using um, sfp ports um, sfp is a standard um, where you can use uh, such small sfp inserts with different uh, connector standards and also with different fiber technologies like multi-mode and single mode, uh, which makes it um, possible to reduce the, um, let's say, quantity on stock that you have because uh, you always just don't, you don't need to have um, several different switches on stock with different connector standards. You have just one on stock and use, um, that SFP port that you want to use. Um, then for the unmanaged switch series, we have um, added mainly um, a 60 port um, switch now, which makes it more economically um, if you have more than eight ports that you need. And uh, so now you can also use a 16 port and uh, we have a PoE version. PoE is power of Ethernet, um, which makes it possible to transmit the power uh, via the Ethernet cable. And um, which is maybe in industrial applications, not that often in use at the moment. Uh, mainly you can find it um, at cameras um, like, uh, PoE cameras that have the power supply via the data cable. Um, also, you can find such PoE switches in, in um, infrastructure applications like um, surveillance cameras uh, outside. So next slide, please. Okay. So flat switches, um, when do we need um, such special uh, flat switches, especially when you have um, a housing um, where you want to build in the switch, uh, a cabin, a small cabinet that is directly located in the machine and uh, you have some space uh, constraints, um, then it's 
good to use such a uh, flat switch um, in combination with our uh, angled RG45 connectors. Um, it makes it possible to build a very uh, flat um, industrial Ethernet network that built that that fits also in a very small housing. So um, what do we have? Um, first of all, for sure, unmanaged switches um, from five to eight uh, to sixteen ports and means different versions. Then we have um, Profinet switch. Uh, what makes a um, Profinet switch special? Um, in this case, it's a type B, a conformance class type B. And uh, type B means um, these switches can be perfectly integrated in the Siemens tool chain. That means uh, if you use the TR portal from Siemens for uh, programming your PLC or configuring uh, your Profinet network, um, then these switches uh, can be perfectly integrated there. That means during the configuration phase in the TR portal, you see uh, these switches there. And uh, also you can use the same diagnosis um, um, like you need it uh, in the TR portal. So perfect integration in that tool chain. Industrial NAT, what is that? Um, NAT, Network Address Translation, is a routing function. Um, first of all, for you, it's, a smaller, it's the smallest router on the market. And uh, many people are thinking about uh, when they think about routers at complex uh, routers that um, are used for connecting the factory to the to the office or something or to the internet. Uh, this is not the use case for for this uh, router. This is specially made from the functionality perspective um, for use inside machines. This is exact the functionality that makes sense uh, inside machines. You can limit the access through a firewall that not everyone can access the machine from outside. Uh, you have NAT function, which makes it possible uh, to integrate a machine very quickly in the customer's network because you don't need to change the IP addresses inside the machine. You have just one IP address of the NAT router for the complete machine to the customer's network. So this is really a highlight product uh, which solves uh, uh, pretty much uh, typical problems for machine builders when using industrial Ethernet. So um, I also want to mention um, our webinar for switches. Um, if you want to learn more about our switch series, then uh, you are invited to join our webinar on 5th of May. Uh, at 12.30. So next slide, please. Smart solutions. So, you know, during the last years, uh, the data arrays um, have increased. Uh, in the factories. Um, so we started with CAT5 for Profinet with 100 megabit. And um, with CAT5, it was um, uh, possible to use four cores, uh, a four core cable. And uh, now with CAT6A or CAT7 for gigabit, um, we have always eight cores in the cable. So and if you remember back um, in time um, for Profibus, it was um, possible to install a network with two cores. So now with Ethernet, we have four or eight cores, which makes it um, very complex and uh, difficult to install. It takes a long time to install um, the connector to the cable and uh, also a lot of possibilities to make mistakes. And uh, this is driving us um, to um, support our customers with solutions uh, that can solve this issue. So next slide, please.
So one of these solutions um, is our EaserLine Fast Connect solution. Fast Connect means uh, with this complete set of tools um, and products, uh, you can save up to 50% of time um, for data connector assembly. It consists out of three core parts. First of all, um, a cable is needed uh, with fast connect cable design. Um, these, all these cables in our portfolio are named with FC for fast connect. And uh, the special um, construction of this cable is the, the inner sheet. So it has a special inner sheet below the screen, uh, which enables the use of this tool, um, our fast connect stripping tool. So with this tool, it is possible to do the cable preparation. That means cutting the outer sheet and the screening in just one step. Means putting the cable in the tool and then turn around and uh, pull it away. And then you have cut screening and shielding in one step. And in the next step, you install our field attachable RG45 connector, APIC data, which is a um, special um, IDC connector, um, which makes it possible to uh, install very quick without stripping the cores or doing uh, or, or crimping with special tools. Uh, very fast and quick. If you want to see how it's done, um, I also can recommend our how-to video, which can also be found on, on YouTube. So next slide, please. So when you need to go further. So I think everyone who already has um, planned an Ethernet network knows that um, Ethernet copper based is limited to 100 meters. And uh, if we want to bridge higher distances, then we need to go to another technology. That technology is fiber optics, um, which we have available under our brand uh, Hydronic. And uh, our offering is first of all cables, connectors, and uh, also patch cords. And um, since we know that uh, fiber optic is um, very often difficult to install for our customers, we are offering um, this also as a service. And so, you know, if, it, um, if you are using glass optical fiber cables, then you need very special know-how, you need very expensive and complex tools uh, to install such cables. So and this is the reason why we are offered this as a installation service. That means uh, you can tell us, you can select your cable from our catalog, tell us, okay, I want this cable, um, I want these connectors attached to the cable in this length, and then uh, we deliver the complete so-called trunk uh, to your factory. So fiber optic, good option uh, if it comes to higher um, higher lengths. And um, so there are two core technologies, multi-mode and single mode. With multi-mode, we can have up to two kilometers, which is suitable for most of the factories. And with single mode, uh, which is mainly used outdoors, um, we can have distances up to 80 kilometers. And then again, together with our new switches, um, we can offer this complete solution out of one hand, cables, connectors, patch cords, switches. So 